This is Richard Wolff from Democracy at Work responding to another Ask Prof. Wolf question from our Patreon community. This question is intriguing and comes from Travis Malone. And I want to thank Travis, as I do all of you in our Patreon community, for the questions you submit and for the engagement with our project uh, that you represent and that is enormously important to us. Travis Malone asks about flaws in Marx's work. He reminds me that I have made reference to such flaws, and he wants to know more about that, which I'm glad to respond to. A little background. Because of the Cold War and all that it has meant over the last 75 years, the kinds of discourse, the kinds of discussion having to do with socialism versus capitalism or Marxism, socialism, anarchism, and so on, have been childishly simple-minded most of the time. We're the good guys, they are the bad guys. Depending on which side you're on, uh, you will say it one way or the other. And one of the ways to put down Marxism was to show or try to show that the people who were influenced by Marx or called themselves Marxists or were called Marxists were dogmatic caricatures who thought that the Marx's work was some kind of biblical source that had the answers to all questions, the solutions to all problems, and so on. Uh, Marx never made such claims for himself. Uh, serious Marxists, and there have been many of them, uh, didn't do that either. Were there some people who got carried away and did that? No doubt. I believe every major school of thought over the last thousands of years have been characterized by people who were subtle and discriminating in finding the great works useful, and those who weren't, who were rather simplistic about it and had to raise whatever great thinker uh, whose works they encountered to some level of absolute truth uh, that it's easy to puncture holes in. I don't want to engage in any of that. I want to pick three areas for you to listen to me about where I think Marx either made mistakes or didn't go far enough or left loose threads hanging that have bedeviled the Marxian tradition ever since. The first one is the theory of the state. Marx did say he was going to get to that, but he never really did. He never did for the state the kind of exhaustive analysis that he did for the capitalist economic system, which was the focus of his work all of his adult life. But he didn't understand and he did not explain what the state exactly was, what its relationship uh, to the rest of the society in which the state existed, what that really was about, and more particularly, how the state interacted with capitalism. He did make comments, and many of them were very insightful, but he did not prepare us, and I think it's fair to be a bit critical of him, he did not prepare us for to understand the role of the state in efforts of societies to go beyond capitalism. Here I'm thinking particularly of the Soviet Union, the People's Republic of China, and so on. There the state became very important because Marxists thought of the state as an element, as a mechanism for making the transition beyond capitalism. And they did not worry about how and why the state could make that transition part way and then become an obstacle to the completion of that transition, uh, something I think we saw in the Soviet Union, we saw in the People's Republic of China, and that is a major issue for the Marxian tradition to overcome now. How to understand the state so that you get from the state what is useful for the transition 
beyond capitalism, but avoid what is the opposite of useful. The second issue I think Marx left us wanting was in the way he characterized the relationship between a capitalist economic system and other systems, feudalism, slavery, self-employment, and so on. Marx made it very clear that for him, capitalism is the relationship in production between the employer and the employee. That's the core of it. That's what distinguishes capitalism from feudalism, where that relationship is between a lord and a serf, and that's a very different connection. And both of those are, again, different from slavery, where the relationship is master-slave, and that, again, is very different from lord-serf or employer-employee. It's not that they don't have some similarities. They do. But they also have these differences, and Marx tended to see it, and here's the flaw, as a sequence in time. You know, you went from slavery to feudalism to capitalism, and that's a reasonable summary view of what had happened in Europe over several thousand years. But it doesn't enable people to understand what Marxists after Marx had to work out which is that this is not a neat sequence, that societies are typically combinations of different systems coexisting with one another. Thus, for example, the first century or more of the United States, before and after it became independent, saw a coexistence of capitalism in one region and slavery in another. To take another example, we do not have inside the households of modern society the same relationship as we have outside. You know, in the household, production occurs. Raw materials, food, is cooked, transformed by labor into a finished product, a meal. Dirty clothes are made into clean clothes. Dirty rooms are made into neatly organized rooms. Wounded bodies are cared for and made healthy. Lots of work is done, but we don't organize it as employer-employee. Even if it feels like that, the husband is not the employer and the wife is not the employee, nor vice versa. It's a different relationship. And when you remember that this relationship, the marriage, is sanctified typically in a church in a ceremony in which each side swears loyalty and care for the other, we're talking feudalism because that's where the marriage ceremony is a copy. So we have a society in which we have a capitalist organization of the workplace and a non-capitalist organization of the household. Similarly, the market is what we have outside the household. But if you come inside the household, and if one member of the family offers $5 to another member of the family for the portion of the chicken that that person gets, They will be given a lecture about how we don't do that here in the family. We take care of each other because we love each other, etc., etc. We don't use the market. Peculiar, you know, you celebrate the market over there and you decry it over here. Marx didn't do much with how different class structures, different organizations of production, because that's what class structure meant to Marx, coexist and what it means and how it shapes a society to have multiple different relationships of production at the same time where people go from one, the household, to another, the workplace, and back again in the same day and what that does to their mentality, their politics, and so on. And the last point I would fault Marx for, and there are more, but I can't do it forever, 
Uh, and again, please don't misunderstand me. Marx is a very fundamental thinker of the modern age. And whatever I'm saying is simply recognizing that there were areas he left untreated or inadequately treated. And here's this last one. It goes back to what I said a minute ago. Capitalism for Marx is about the employer-employee relationship. That's not property. That's a different matter. How objects, which may or may not include human beings, become the exclusive private property of some people from whom, uh, who can then exclude others from it. Property is a very important social institution, but it's a different matter from the relationship in production that people enter into, such as employer-employee. And there has been a tendency, both in Marx's writings and afterwards, to kind of conflate these, to collapse them, as if you could summarize a, a, a system by talking about how property is owned. So, for example, many have said capitalism is the private ownership of the means of production. Well, it may or it may not be private ownership. That's really a secondary matter if your focus is on the relationships in production. The employer and the employee is the key thing you want to think about. You're interested in property if and how it affects that production relationship if you're using Marx's theory. Marx could have been much clearer than he was on how he was a critic of private property, which he was, and a critic of the employer-employee relationship of capitalism. He could have done that without collapsing them together, which he often did in writing out his chapters, his books, and his speeches. And that left the tendency to think that when you talk about property, somehow you're automatically including the relations of production, and that's a mistake and can get you into all kinds of difficulty. So yes, I take my hat off to Karl Marx. He taught me a great deal, as has the Marxist traditions. I basically feel sympathy for those who never read that material, never learned it, it's too bad, it's your loss. Uh, but it's also clear that there were areas that later Marxists had to work on that remain unfinished pieces of understanding that our generations and those to come will have to fill in. This is Richard Wolff for Democracy at Work.